Uh, week three. Oh. <laughs> week three, and uh, yeah, I guess I'm feeling a bit more comfortable introducing them now at this point. So, um, like we were just talking about before, I think uh, it's real important to, yeah, uh, just thank you guys as well for like being a part of it because, I mean, without without the kind of support there as well from the guests, so I'll be struggling to actually keep this podcast running. So, um, really appreciate it, guys. Thank you. And um, yeah, like every week, um, no I call I, um, where you're from, who you are, and we'll just, we'll start with you guys this week, whoever wants to go first, just tell the audience a little bit about yourselves. Cool. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, ko Jade Aho no Tauranga Aho. Mm. There we go. Tolo for love. Uh, my name is Jerry, and I uh, come from Pitone, Wellington. Mm. Cool. Kia ora, Jerry. Um, kia ora everyone, uh, Royal again, and welcome to week three. Um, we're just going to have a bit of a carry-on session, I think, from last week, um, just with uh, education and ideologies. I think um, this particular topic just needs a bit, bit of time, I think, to unlock. Mm. Um, it's a bit of an intricate one, uh, but I think it's, it's just super important to just get a lot of discussion and why not about this so we can just share a lot of perspectives I think and, and kind of um, experiences and whatnot and yeah put it into context and what's kind of happening and what we see around today and whatnot and see how we can maybe make improvements just as people as a population and yeah cool um, so I guess yeah just following on from last week uh, we we had Zane and Rauri on and it was just cool to um, hear their different experiences on their high schools and, and, mm. and primary schools and things they went through. Um, yeah, and, and I guess just to reiterate some of the stuff that I said, I, I've got that uh, very fortunate experience. I, I like to refer to it now as, as having that 18 years in Ireland abroad and yeah, um, having, I guess, like a, to some people, a bit of a unique perspective on society and, and and people in general and equity and and all that good stuff so righteous yeah yeah so um yeah i just um want to continue on a little bit from that this week um and i guess yeah um if you guys want to just share a little bit about maybe what your schooling life was like here and um yeah any things that you could have thought maybe could have been a bit better for you guys or um maybe could have been improved on or things that were already awesome um yeah any anything at all yeah. <clears throat> all right i'll start then <laughs> <laughs> um so i like went to three schools like primary intermediate college i never moved through schools yeah um and i mean i loved primary and intermediate but i could say that high school was a bit touch and go um i'm one of those students that like worked really really hard but just can't get like that a like works my butt off so by the time I got to year 13, I really just, I just couldn't be bothered with school anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that really, like, it took its toll, like, for teachers as well, trying to get me to work, and I just couldn't be bothered. Right. Um, but the subjects that I loved were obviously PE. It's what I major in. That's what I do here. Yep. Um, and history is what I minor in. So, cool. um, yeah, so they're two subjects that I'm really passionate about. Um, and I love that, especially P incorporates a lot of both sides of New Zealand cultures. Mm. Um, mm. But I, I feel like it's almost like just brushed on. I don't think like, especially like whole order is very like, you know, implemented into the P course and the curriculum, but I don't think it's brought about the right way. I think it's, it's explained in a way that is very like, there's this, 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 and this, but it's not interconnected. It's so yeah, it's, it's a, like, such a holistic like mm. thing to talk about, and it's really not taught that way. Mm -hmm. And I think I struggled with that because, like, you know, you put it into like four boxes and you write like yeah, your spiritual yeah, yeah. and your emotional, but then you never actually People like see yeah. no. Yeah, yeah. And I think like especially with New Zealand and Maoris in particular, is like the environment, the land is so important, mm -hmm. and that's not even interwoven into any of that kind of stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and like I want to go into outdoor education so like I want to be able to bring all that into you know what I want to teach and how I don't want to stick to like the curriculum as such because it is so structured mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I don't I don't believe that like how 
like New Zealand has never really like its history is so unstructured it's not like the traditional you know this happened and then this happened it's very like yeah I think our New Zealand history is quite messy mm -hmm. um which brings me to history is like a thing like year mm -hmm. 9 10 11 is very this happened this happened this happened this happened mm -hmm. and it's always the New Zealand history is just either the treaty or Anzac mm -hmm. which is our major points of our history mm -hmm. I guess but year 9 and 10 was a lot on the treaty and then as soon as we kind of got to the age where we had almost opinions on it it really died off mm -hmm. And I think that sucked. What do you think that was down to? Do you think it was more the system itself wanting to teach a certain structure for all the students? Yeah. And once people had that critical thinking about them, they kind of maybe yeah. decided to pick it apart a bit and yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. that really was an issue that I found is that when it came to like the hard and the nitty gritty, mm -hmm. it stopped. Like it just mm -hmm. kind of was like, mm -hmm. and in education, that's what you learn from. You learn from the conflict, you learn from debating and mm, these yeah. big conversations that are tough and yeah. like scary and it just says nothing mm -hmm. I think yeah otherwise you just don't really understand what they've kind of just taught you eh? like, yeah kind of just take like a, a rope learning version of what yeah. they said without really like digesting it digesting or exactly. ironing out everything so that it like it clicks for you eh? yeah I mean yeah and I really bounce off people's opinions on things so when like I see facts or, or facts mm -hmm. I want to know like okay well what what do you think about that like topic or that issue it's like they're just kind of reading it in a book and being like hey i need to show this to the students but i'm not gonna put any like emphasis on what i think which is fine mm -hmm. but i like personally really bounce off of like what people think of certain things yeah. and as like new zealand we really need to like really go hard on those really tough subjects I just think a lot of us are very oblivious to half of our history mm. and as like a European like I always feel like I can't or I don't want to talk about stuff like that because I don't, almost don't want to hear it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I almost feel like not like I'm not personally attacked because obviously it's not like me personally but mm -hmm. just sometimes I'm like I don't want to talk about because I don't want to hear what maybe mm -hmm. my ancestors have done mm -hmm. or anything like that and I think that's why a lot of the time it isn't taught or it isn't because it's such a like scary thought yeah that's um that's very real though eh? like, mm, it's yeah. real it's and so shot, real shot for saying that too like yeah, yeah that's, that's right on 100 <laughs> percent. Yeah. i really really respect that aj like mm. um saying that because um like i've mentioned to you guys too i think um it was also said last in last week's podcast about um, for, for me in particular, having that time abroad in Ireland and then coming yeah. back here is, is kind of exactly what you've just said. You know, um, th there's almost that kind of like elbow and shoulder nature to the society or the um, embarrassment or shyness is, you know, trying to move away from those topics of, of things that need to be discussed. Yeah. I've been saying this most weeks, you know, that this is the um, kind of, I guess, the trajectory of this podcast is to, yeah, to bring these sorts of things up so yeah. exactly like this is the importance of sharing those types of personal experiences because now we can like i mean we can see like you know the the emotion and whatnot behind um stories like that um and and to go back to my grandfather's concept around his health model and to Kākano and being like the viewed as i guess metaphorically as the embryonic sea but if you if you i mean if the thing is is that you don't need um uh, different languages, different um, okay, different languages perhaps, but um, the general concept of viewing someone as an embryonic seed, okay, like that just general concept of how we nurture them, how how families nurture them, and all these type things are so important, and and to link kind of almost that concept to what you're saying about education is that how can you nourish like the people and 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 everything when you're giving them all different types of I guess nutrients through mm. education i guess that's kind of like the best way to put it you know yeah. and and yeah that's um again kind of what i alluded to last week with having that kind of um this journey of maori tanga that i'm on at the moment and and noticing exactly what like what you're talking about like why why is it that people are shying away from these things why can we not just see eye to eye on more certain things and and i genuinely think it's because there's not enough of this going on you know yeah. the yeah. open-mindedness of the conversations and whatnot so yeah um no like awesome like um perspectives there jade no, thank yeah, you um 
this area as well, if you don't mind sharing yeah. a little bit about your uh, journey. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah. Just, just a disclaimer for anyone watching. I've just had my first percolated coffee <laughs> <laughs> and I'm bouncing. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, no, sweet. Um, um, I was really lucky, eh? Um, I grew up in this town called, um, or Petone is what it's like yeah. called, but Pitone. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like a, actually a really historic, like early settler town. Mm -hmm. um, right in the pocket of the harbour of, of Wellington yeah. and um, it was a bilingual school mm -hmm. Tony Central School and um, it was cool though because um, yeah I guess like growing up I got to see like we got to embrace both the Māori culture yeah. like growing up and then there was also the European curriculum yeah. side so like one school like one ground but one side was going through a Māori curriculum yeah. and one side was going through an English curriculum that was That's really good. cool but we yeah. in, like there was like I don't know, like, yeah, you can't really hide from one another when you're in the same school, mm. so obviously yeah. we saw everyone yeah. all, like, every day. Yeah. But when we, like, broke off into classes, like, yeah, some kids went and did the Māori curriculum, which was awesome, eh? Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. Sadly, that that side of our school is, like, like, slowly dying out, eh? But, right. yeah, just because of, I don't know, like, rushing times and yeah, you know, just numbers. Yeah, something similar to what Jade said there as well, bro, is about that whole maybe like don't want to brush them don't want to kind of gloss over the the heavy topics maybe do you think it's i'm not sure i think it's it's i think it's just really the i don't know it'll be the whole society around the school because it's just numbers and enrollment kind of mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. i mean because it's 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 better in other pockets of new yeah. zealand where mm -hmm. like the wananga schools and, yeah and yeah. stuff like that it's really strong and it's good and like it's sad to see because i grew up in that that town yeah. where it was like historically like yeah really rich historic like history town yeah yeah and that side of it was there when i was growing up mm. but now like going back it's not there anymore so. yeah but yeah i mean so yeah that was awesome so that's kind of where i can trace back my like mm. early relationship with all these concepts and yeah you know and all this stuff that we're learning about now in yeah. PE. like yeah i grew up with that as well yeah. and just because it was it was in my everyday as well mm -hmm. and as well as acknowledging my my Pacifica culture as well, 100%. very similar. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. So, and all those, and all those concepts, of, and um, not too much. I haven't dug too much deep into like the effects of colonization on in Samoa. Yeah. But um, yeah, just growing up here, and I emphasize, yeah. you know, yeah, and like sure. I feel as connected yeah. as to the whole issue. Yeah. Yeah. going around and you know yeah. Yeah, and for sure. i can yeah i can hardly say that, that yeah. I'm, I'm very connected to like just whatever's going on right now mm -hmm. mm. awesome yeah um just a, a quick a quick question i mean for both of you i guess do you think um yeah like um i guess like, I, I'll, I'll just preface by saying this first i guess that it's a bit of a sh it's a bit of a shame that we as Toyota or students here down at university kind of really only get to experience that almost like critical state, critical thinking stage or like, you know, the um, being able to just dissect the information properly. We only really get that at the tertiary level and, and even in yeah. terms of this sort of education that we're talking about, like history and whatnot. Um, do you think that, um, I mean, like I say, like pretty heavy topics, like pretty um, awkward stuff to talk about. Do you think that um i guess like it should be implemented at at least like a high school level so is that we're not almost kind of you know developing over six years of our lives and then being set on mm. i guess like certain ways of thinking or ideals or whatever and then we get to university and it's like oh everything mm. i always thought yeah. of, was kind of yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 um but then again obviously at you know like at primary level i mean how you're how learning you... the basics aren't you yeah so, I mean... yeah well i think i think you'd have to it's like a it's like a wound that you're just putting a bandage over like, yeah i mean you're gonna have to rip it off sometime and, you know like yeah and i think like you know like there's gonna be like one generation of like it's gonna be like tough work to implement like mm. real honest truths into mm. a curriculum but then yeah. after that like the hard work's done mm. yeah. and then like like how we've been talking before about the importance of cultural epistemologies and stuff like that you know like there's so many benefits mm. that we could see from an integrated culture mm. It's just not going to get there if there's no yeah yeah hard, hard conversation yeah, yeah. yeah it's like the whole you heal faster when you're young so like mm. yeah you're well, not gonna i guess you'll think about it but it's not mm. gonna hurt you as much hearing those hard stuff when you're 
-hmm. at a younger age or like even early high school like mm -hmm. you kind of need that yeah and even um the flip side of it it's harder to understand later mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know if you're in your ways you know? exactly exactly. So. exactly um that's um i guess kind of leads me on to a what I was going to touch on next, man, is and we've um, talked about this as well before about the generational effect almost. Yeah. And one thing I've definitely noticed since coming back here is that, um, like, doesn't really matter, I guess, what kind of um, ethnicity you are, um, European or Māori or Pacifica, it's the, um, I don't know, I guess the, yeah, the generational transformations, I guess, of like our attitudes um, as people, you know. Yeah. Um, I know that through studying my, my grandfather's work and I'm quite fortunate to actually have the literature there um, um, and obviously my family too to, to tell me the stories but have the literature there I, I guess to almost um, just show um, what his kind of perspectives like and attitudes were like in his society at that time um, so um, so just to kind of go back on it he was um, actually moved from Kafia um, where I fuck a papa back to and uh, went to work for a dairy farmer, a European dairy farmer, when he was ten. So just from a cultural adaptation standpoint, like that's that's a, a massive shift, you know. Yeah. So he didn't even speak English before he actually moved to that house. Yeah. Um, so I guess just in in terms of that, it's almost like um, there was, you know, transformations like that and transitions like that. You don't see a whole lot of today, you know. Yeah. What I mean, like that drastic, we'll say, because our society is a lot different. Yeah. Um, I guess then you could go to my, um, I guess my dad, uncle and auntie's generation and what I've, um, I guess what I've noticed there, even from talking to my father back in Ireland at the moment and talking to him about this stuff is that um, it's not that it's um, being uneducated, it's more the just lack of knowledge gained, I guess, from, mm. from their schooling system even. So I'm just, I guess I'm just noticing that pattern of, I guess, of kind of the hardships and stuff that we'll say a generation like my grandfather went through then going to down to my, my father's generation or my auntie and uncle and seeing the kind of how education at that time has developed their perspectives now because I can understand it when I'm talking to them back and forth about it. Mm -hmm. And now almost kind of migrating to this area that we're in right now and we are those critical thinkers for our own uni and we're able to just sit there and break things down mm -hmm. for what they are, you know. Um, so yeah, it's just... Uh, um, it's it's cool to be able to acknowledge that I guess, but at the same time, you know, um, me I guess talking to say um, uh, ancestors or whatever, like a lot older than me, you know, um, I understand too. There's that element of I wasn't there for what you guys experienced. Yeah. I am mm. here learning what I'm learning at the moment, and I I would hope that my impact or or my my perspectives could help change something. You know, um, I guess. Awesome. Yeah, j yeah, you know, j just more so in the sense of kind of, um, I've acknowledged this, that since I've came back here, that there's obviously conflicts within the society, but at the same time, my, me as a person, I guess my perspective always comes down to fairness and equity. Yeah. And so I feel like no matter what sort of um, situation or uh, whatever it is, you know, like for, for example, now the history and the education here, if you go out and ask a general person outside the door, um, and I mean, you put that into like context of like two chocolate bars and one friend gets one each or something like that. Mm. But but people understand that concept because it's equitable. It's fair because it's even, you know. Yeah. So so now why don't we just like shift that kind of perspective to, I, mean, I guess like imposing it on our education system. Now let's look at what people are learning and and the options and availabilities they've got to to learn. Um, the stuff that needs to be learned, I guess, and yeah. and then kind of almost looking at it as, and now asking people the same thing. I know that you know what equity is and fairness is. Now, now can you, you know, show that perspective through our education system and give me your honest breakdown? And that's what I've noticed here, is asking people those questions and almost kind of seeing that, you know, a lot of them like, are like, oh, I don't really want to talk about that. Right? Yeah. And, and so, and so that, that's, I guess, my pet peeve at the moment is, knowing that people have it in them you know knowing yeah. that the people have the understanding and stuff in there it's just a matter of talking and and things like this to actually yeah. get people to really just become like i guess easier um or like more comfortable talking about these types of things and and hopefully that might be a way of like maybe getting people to want to actually make a proactive change about things that are going on you yeah. know so 
that's just yeah, yeah. yeah part of my just a bit of a perspective um again something that i've noticed from being an outsider for so long and then coming back in here and yeah mm. so yeah well that, that's huge mm. yeah, like yeah that, that's yeah. a huge mm. yeah well, there's a lot going on in that Is that it, one yeah. that one statement there but yeah. again yeah i mean it's just um i guess that's where is you can see the difference between um the different cultural um socio-cultural mm -hmm. um yeah. effects of knowing like certain um concepts or ideas or mm. values yeah um but yeah um I don't think it's I don't think it would be too hard to implement a culturally um even curriculum mm. I just think it's it depends on it's because there's such a wider system around it's mm. like working through education and yeah. that's something like capitalism yeah. or you yeah. know just like a pro-economy based um society mm -hmm. but so that in itself kind of drives like why we do things yes. so sure. And it's so there's there's totally different. So like you're coming from like a so like coming from like an island mm -hmm. perspective, you know, like mm. um, all we're looking for is is just community like based living, to you know, like yeah. there's yeah. not yeah. other than that, like you know, like the the effects or like I don't know, it's just very like it's it's small local mm -hmm. base, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like somewhere in like New Zealand, where like yeah implications are like just reaching over like all sorts of like global mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's just a bit you know like there's so many yeah so many things that work there that just stop yeah like 100%. say like cultural epistemologies from even getting a voice or yeah you know because yeah. obviously we know what's right yeah. like we know what's right yeah you know but does yeah. it does yeah. it make money like, yeah exactly, <laughs> man. I, exactly like at the end of the day that's kind of yeah. like what 99.9 percent yeah. mm -hmm. of things come down to yep. so which is yeah. which sucks <laughs> but it's like going back to what you were saying with your schooling how there was two separate curriculums mm -hmm. do you reckon that now it like because like you know the maori curriculum is slowly like not dying but like you know going away because of the enrollment mm -hmm. should it be merged like mm -hmm. would that question. you know like because when you were saying that i was like it's great that they are both in your school but like why should they be two separate yeah things? Right. like pathways right. like why mm. shouldn't they mm. be together mm -hmm. and yeah. i think that's also where these issues are arising is because we're not seeing it as this unity we're seeing it as okay well there's this and there's this so whoever wants to stay in this can go there and whoever wants to go there can go there yeah but that it shouldn't be a choice it should be these two things should be together mm -hmm. and you're gonna have to learn it Righteous. like yeah, i yeah, think yeah. like i definitely I'm grown so. up in such a mm -hmm. like naive world where you know i've stuck to this like path and i don't like i'm very tunnel vision i think and coming to university i have definitely like everything's just gonna be like like mm. holy heck like mm. i haven't actually even yeah. like thought about this from this like perspective i've only ever been taught a certain way mm -hmm. so i feel like yeah with that whole separate curriculum thing like it's really cool and it's awesome that it's still like there but to me it's just like a no-brainer to mm -hmm. merge yeah. them mm -hmm. like Holy. i don't know like that's yeah. just <laughs> you, you know um i'm gonna <clears throat> when i think about that stuff you know i think about um because what I I guess something that I've just pulled from that conversation there was just that you know almost having those two separate pathways and kind of making sure they're both like looked after and or whatever you know yeah. that, you know that everyone's getting their thing and they're happy or whatever um yeah I, I feel like that's that's what's happened a lot in society like how we've transitioned is that we we almost get lost in like all the little nitty-gritty small things that have branched from we'll say one particular problem so we'll say like in this case it's history and, yeah. now, and now we've talked about our experiences and now we've talked about the things that we could have fixed under that history bracket in, in education mm. and and i feel like i feel like a i feel like a lot of people are actually making a living off that stuff these days because you know they're, they're coming up with these i guess like micro political approaches to um or like initiatives and these type things to branch past some of the i guess the uneasy areas that we see but but i guess what I'm trying to say here is that 
yeah, okay, you can acknowledge that, look after those people, look after those people, look after those people. But I just really think that in today's society, um, that's actually a default almost because instead of like addressing the problem that actually just needs to be addressed, which is like we've said now, mm. is, the, is the actual, maybe the system itself and, and the perspectives of the system itself before they relay information, yeah. uh, like that, like it's the, uh, it's maybe the, the origin or that person up there that needs to be approached as opposed to um, all this like little debate. And I feel like, I feel like because of that reason, that man that's sitting up there looking, overseeing all these type things gets away with a lot of shit pretty much. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. um, he gets, delegates all these people down to look after all these policies and, and all this type of stuff. It's, it's, um, I'm quite strong on the opinion of it's the, it's, we'll say in this case, the government um, who can change the education system or alter it. It's those, it's those people up right at the very, very, very top of the branch, in my opinion, that need to be approached and kind of, looked at as to like what are their like um i guess motives or what are their ideologies and what are their things because we as people can continue to um over and over and over again um form these 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 ways of like working around the system and, and all that type thing and that's that's cool too but again like uh when i was talking to you guys about climate change you know our world like might not actually exist in 50 years time so like um, there's just a lot of I think time wasting going on at the moment mm -hmm. when we could just be tackling problems more head on. Um, I guess that's another reason again why I wanted to start something like this is because I need yeah. I I I've, I would wish and I would hope people can listen to something like this and gain the open mind that can gain that open mindedness from it and then maybe take that to do something proactive more proactive about it you know. Mm. But yeah, um, I don't know. Yeah, I it's yeah it's 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 just a shame for me man i i, I still can't understand why um there isn't a, a special history of like being so important in this country in the curriculum why it's not an equitable one at the moment or at least you know yeah, the it's consensus very skewed mm. like i find i'm not sure about university history yet mm -hmm. but because you get to pick your classes as well like right. i think that'll be sweet but like when looking even at anzac it was so like, blah, 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 blah. Oh, but there was like this small Māori battalion that had all this like victories and did all this cool stuff. Trench warfare and yeah. stuff, yeah. But yeah. we're not gonna look at that. We'll, like, we've touched on that now, cool, sweet. We've kind of ticked that box, go back. But it's like, why don't we talk about that? Like that is a cool, like yeah. that is a victory. Like that is a win. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think it's that it's that whole box ticking. Mm. And I, I don't know, I just, yeah, I think it needs to be yeah. touched, like changed a little bit with yeah. that. It shouldn't be a box to tick. Like it's not a box to be ticked. One hundred percent. I mean, I mean, look what look what a, a more open minded um, perspective on the Te Tiriti or Waitangi has done for us. I mean, mm. through papers like Amory's and Chanel's and whatnot of um, just being taught, kind of. I mean, really, and it's going to sound biased to some people, but just being taught what's happened. Yeah. You know, really taught what's happened. But I mean, like, look at the unity that you get through, um, you know, things like Noho, Noho Marae, going out to Marae trips for the weekend, having cultures from every corner of the globe in there and chucking them all under one roof. Uh, again, it doesn't have to be under a Marae um, setting as such, but just, um, yeah, I don't know, like, uh, you can see the effects of kind of what a good perspective and a good curriculum can do for people you know yeah. and people walk out of courses like that after a semester and it's just like they they can't believe the change that's happened in, in, mm. in, inside them i know that even happened with me mm. and i'm trying to explore this maori tonga journey more but even for me the appreciation that you get um just by yeah by being taught you know being able to just break things down man because that i think just relieves a lot of the conflict in our society it's less opinionated it's less i've got the better opinion that's the better way to do it it's you know this 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 it's more of a kind of i see you yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, see I see you, you. Yeah. i understand yeah, yeah cool yeah, yeah you know so we're in this together but yeah 100 yeah. percent. um agreed yeah anything else Lee? no um well yeah well as a like a prospecting teacher like that's the dream like you know yeah. like, mm -hmm. especially for like like my future vision of like a curriculum mm. yeah would just be just like culturally diverse but yeah like how good like that we live in new zealand like with like, such a beautiful culture like maori like that just needs to be mm -hmm. somehow woven into the the curriculum like yeah i'm i'm with you i'm like a little flustered at the 
yeah. why not? Like, yeah. You know, why yeah. not? It's, yeah. it's good. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Oh man, it's, a, it's honestly a question I ask myself every day. Mm. You know, um, yeah, it just I don't mm. know. I, I want to I want to chuck this in um, just just for um, I guess to sh to show or to at least illustrate some of the effects of. Um, uh, we'll say not having uh, the right education or the right perspective behind you can do and um, I mean man I've I come from a Māori Pākehā family mixed you know my grandmother's white my koro um, rest in peace he's you know as Māori as you can get okay so I've, I've come from from like you know the quite even even side of the fence for both you know um, I just think um, when I came back here um, and, and to yeah again to illustrate the effects of that kind of perspective of being skewed is that um, the smallest thing for me was my second day in Napier when I came down here and I went into a shop and and I mean call me crazy call me oh bro thinking about that too much like no I'm just talking about what I saw that's all mm. this is all that is mm. you know and there was a uh, a park here I I hate this differential thing to be honest with you there was a there was there was a white-skinned male in front of me uh, yeah okay so well, the, this person this was, person was, was in front of me yeah New but Zealand like, European. <laughs> New Zealand European, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly so again like see all the different names and terminology we've yeah. got for this stuff but anyway <laughs> so um but I did honestly and um I'm just saying this because I feel like this stuff just needs to be just kind of brought out almost but the interaction that I just saw with that shopkeeper that time um was the lady i mean I'm, I'm presuming i'm guessing that the man was probably a few years older than me maybe in his 30s mid 30s but that's it and it was just cool to see their interaction you know like oh hey how's your day been like yeah pretty cool yeah oh, i got the bloody kids down there you know, yeah. and I, you know it was awesome and and so i walked up and i just come out from the gym across the road okay so i just had like gym gear tank top on or whatever and i've got my time walker hanging up and I mean, I walk up to her and I'm like, oh, hey, how's the day going? And I got nothing back. Like, like, like it was, um, it was to that point where it was almost like awkward, um, that like I was thinking about it. Like it was like slow motion mm. happening in front of me. Like, did mm. she actually just ignore me in my own, like, you know, in mm. my own head? That's and harsh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and again, like people will say that's, that's like, oh, you no, you're really new. You're paranoid, bro. No, like. No, that's just that's just what happened in front of me, man. You know, mm. and and it was. I guess I'm only really bringing that up is because, I mean, you can see like a complexion thing or like a or an appearance type thing. What it just did to just someone like a shopkeeper in the space of two minutes, mm. you know, and the interaction, the different interaction um, between us, and so, um, yeah, you see that stuff like uh, highlighted and amplified on on things like stuff like Code Red NZ, uh, when you now you've got people's opinions involved with politics and all these type things, and and I guess like yeah, from a small and a big level, um, I don't think if we all kind of like grew up in more of a culturally safe environment with um, you know a, an education system that actually was good for all of us, that small things like that wouldn't happen. That people like me, as particular as I might be, wouldn't be picking up and bringing this to light, you know, conversations. Because, yeah, you're right. You know, they're awkward to talk about. But I mean, mm -hmm. I've I feel like the they almost need to be said to to just almost wake people up a little bit to see what's actually kind of going on outside. Yeah. You know. So. Well, damn, she had a pretty <laughs> low energy level for you. Yeah. Maybe she needs one of those coffees. Maybe she needs a perk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, uh, uh, yeah, like I don't know, like. Yeah, like I mean, you're you're hundred percent right, in, like you know, and voicing what you you know you feel about the situation. But yeah, it's just things. Some I people see, are just man. some people, yeah. like you know. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, sorry. Yeah, ah, no. I think just going back to the like growing up and it like out with our um, education. My like my primary. I don't know about everybody else's, but I like I just remember always if it came down to art or anything, it was always like revolved around like Māori legends and the creation narratives and all that and I think like so in primary it's always incorporated and I think like you know all of our commands and like welcomings and all that were always in te reo mm -hmm. um but it was that you know like that stop and I think like if that had all carried on towards tertiary and high school and all that mm -hmm. it would be perfect it'd mm -hmm. be so good mm -hmm. but 
what like because it stops at primary i think we forget about that and just even talking about it now i just like i go back and i'm like but i i did all this through primary like i did all these cool things and i did like maori was incorporated into my primary education and all that kind of you know it, but it was it was quite casual i would say that mm -hmm. but i mean as a you know well, five, made, five to ten year old yeah, yeah exactly clip, so. and like even like doing specs to a six with Anne Marie, like we were trying to, I was trying to explain like the story of Maui to um, one of the guys in my um, whanau group. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I actually know this stuff. Like, yeah. <laughs> but it was yeah. from primary, like yeah. all the way back then. Yeah. And it's just like, why? Yeah, like it cuts off. Mm -hmm. And I think, like, obviously, I've never experienced what you experienced and mm -hmm. like with that like shop lady and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think as well, like, she has forgotten about all that stuff that she might have learned in primary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what sucks, is that it doesn't get to the point where we actually are influenced by it. Yeah. Like, as kids, we just kind of see it as, like, oh, that's a cool story. Like, yeah, I'll draw a sun and a person, like, with a hook and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. But it's, like, that needs to be incorporated through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I think... Um, so when yeah, so you've said you got you've felt the benefits of like mm. a, a Maori like integrated education, you know? Yeah. To me that, that stuff it just it, it hits cultural it hits values, you know? It's yeah. not it's not like yes, I'm not I'm not slamming like Maori academics or like, you know, like the study of mm -hmm. you know, some fields that are culturally specific to Maori. Mm. But literally that stuff just makes you like generally a better person, you know, because mm. it's it's so value based, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so like taking what that shopkeeper did mm -hmm was just like that's a no-no like yeah, yeah. And, and like and you know like growing up like that's just not nice <laughs> like you know yeah. like, i mean you know like i don't know what she would have had going on like mm -hmm. we'll just leave her there but um i feel like in the education instead of it being more like a class-based approach mm -hmm. it just needs to be like an environment-based yeah. approach yeah yeah so like um needs to just starting with yeah, starting with language like yeah that's like when i when i see people like just gonna use you as an example, Jade. Like, some like park here and come yeah. killed her. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. To me, that lights me up straight. I'm like, yo, yeah, hey, yeah. Like, you know, man. like, so like more smile. It's, it's, like, it's literally just a, a word, eh? Yeah, like a exactly. word that can to just like change your day yeah. almost. But it, it like, tells it just, you, yeah, yeah, it tells you that they've been around the culture or they've had an uh, uh, um, experience within the culture, you know. Yeah. And yeah. then when it comes off, like it's it's like comes off like like perfect pronunciation, boom, even better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like you're just like, mm, righteous. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the yeah. scary thing as well, is that like the, with the pronunciation, like I think a lot of people like don't want to like just in case they get it wrong mm. and then like like mm. then it's that whole embarrassment like mm. thing. Mm -hmm. And like obviously I like I try my best and I love being corrected on it. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people don't. A lot of people mm. think it's quite a like standoffish, like yeah. what, like I've tried, like why are you correcting me? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's like that's a good thing. Like exactly. as long as yeah. you don't do it in like a you know aggressive way, like you shouldn't say it like that, like mm. which I've never experienced. Like I yeah. like I'll say something, but like, oh like maybe we should like tweak that, and you're like okay, yeah. cool, thanks. Yeah, like, that, thanks for a, that. That's a give and take on both sides yeah. of, of that learning experience. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like the reason why I say that is because um, like. I feel like that could be an almost like a road that we take towards this integration of, mm. of you know, like mm -hmm. of yeah. acceptance is that. So I'll use 320 and your example of yeah. the Noho mm. Like, that's a lived experience, yeah. you know? Yeah. You can't read that. Mm -hmm. Like, so when we see all these, like, um, like you're in primary school and you've got you're drawing sons and, you know, you've got all these yeah. body myths and legends, it's like, that's that's good at that age because it does imprint like you know yeah. a certain like culture on you mm -hmm. but then you get older um you, you start becoming more critical thinking yeah. yeah and so where does that fit into your yeah. your whole education yeah. sphere yeah like it doesn't really for some people yeah so and this is a this is like a gripe that i have like me almost heading into the teaching field is that a lot of that stuff is is ticking boxes mm -hmm. yeah. like you know a lot of the um standards and codes that teachers have to complete these days mm -hmm. is literally like incorporate te reo maori into your curriculum mm -hmm. like five times a day mm -hmm. it's like 
cool. Yep. Mm -hmm. the, the, yes, they'll get that's learned. They'll learn how to speak the language. Yeah. There's just so much more to it, you know. There's like, there's just lived experiences and and like how you generally like mm. give yourself off and yeah. you know or yeah. care and aroha, yeah. things like that. They're that like, you can't really teach that like through like word learning, word like learning word or learning you know stuff, you yeah. have to like mm. provide real world experiences and the opportunity for kids to even just experience that mm -hmm. type of you know of that yeah this cultural approach yeah. and yeah. and like we can't nitpick and say that oh well um there's none of that because mm -hmm. there is and like yeah for that, sure. like, good on that yeah. but um there could be more like yeah, yeah for yeah. sure yeah and you just tie it just tie it more back to to our maori mm -hmm. and all just Maori them yeah. like in general and 100%. especially I, like I always say that this is like this is like my 320 um like go to first liner <laughs> just yeah. like we live in the most unique country in the world like that's New Zealand is a beautiful place yeah. like how good is it that we have all this culture mm -hmm. but then how good is not like you know how good is mm. this culture that is indigenous to us you know mm -hmm. we just don't make the most, the most of, of like it, you know like the most of it, like it's um, like it like i don't want to compare it to america because we're way better than america <laughs> but <I> like <laughs> but yeah like they're so multicultural diverse but agree, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> yeah. sorry <laughs> yeah. students listen Absolutely. to this um yeah. but yeah like and just so many different cultures mm -hmm. I just always envision this like well, this like utopia of like um, accepting everyone's culture. Yeah, yeah. And like just the benefits of everyone's mm. culture. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Can I can I just um just chuck in too I guess um about like having those environments with people um you know like they, it's got to almost come from within as well like their willingness to want to um mm. to like acknowledge or appreciate the culture or whatever yeah. the diversity sure. that they yeah. have around them mm -hmm. um just a, like a quick um for Karo as well just um i think as well like that's got to translate like into the education system itself in terms of the, the like teaching workforce that we've got there um the competencies behind the people teaching will say te ao maori the language mm -hmm. and te ao maori base curriculums mm -hmm. they do you know um obviously i mean uh like majority of those courses that are in tertiary level at the moment are taught by Māori and, and whatnot, mm. you know, with that um, gene genealogy behind them. But I just think in general, like anyone um, working on those forces, uh, like, I'm sorry, in those uh, sectors, I guess, of, of, of the government and whatnot at the moment, um, yeah, they've, uh, their attitude as well, like at, at their level and, uh, and where they're at in their life and stuff too, has to come from like a real genuine mm. place because, yeah. um, you know like we can say as well here it's the um the, the things that are taught and or lack thereof but you know it's all about providing that experience too and that's why i think it was great that you guys brought up things like the noho and stuff like that is like having not just like classroom based things um mm -hmm. you've got the teaching force there and, and those type of people who are willing to yeah like take you away for a weekend to a noho do waka ama do like all those cultural things but really get into it with the students too because yeah. that too like adds to the the experience as well you know yeah. and um yeah like you know I, I guess like really just kind of goes back to just like having you know just the honesty about yourself and what and who you are and where you're from to go into like fields like that because i feel like um th those types of sectors and whatnot are just going to be expanding more and more and more as we go on especially like in this generation because i know that there's more of us graduating around the times that we're in uni now going into those jobs you know yeah um so yeah um yeah it was just another another um for of mine just yeah about um the workforce themselves as well you know the competencies across all, all boards and whatnot so yeah that was just another that right um, yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, well, speaking of competencies and stuff like that, like, yeah, there's so many of them out there as well. Like, there's um, Tataiako, mm -hmm. which is the, it's pretty much the number one, like, framework yeah. of working in schools that you need to know if you're going to be a teacher, which is like a uh, five or six, excuse me if I'm wrong, like, value-based um, uh, competency. Yeah. And um, that's, like, you have to know that if you want to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but it's just like it's like how much mm -hmm. do you know that you know? It's not yeah. like how 
like really how much do you know that in your heart like yeah. that's kind of that's the main thing that we want to i guess is that at all levels it. as well of teaching mm. Mm -hmm. like primary and intermediate high school is that at all um but that framework is like really like yeah so you i'm pretty sure you have to draw like this is part of your um teaching college experience right. okay. and it's like one of the standards you have to tick off yeah but it's not a tick box i think <laughs> that's the thing it's it's cool. Cool. <laughs> yeah i think they've actually got something um similar at the moment with uh health professionals as well um and kind of the yeah the competency competency levels of of yeah, the jobs that they do in particular too obviously being so important you know dealing with the public and sicknesses and illnesses and that's um being a public health student i guess and indigenous development and whatnot the nature of my courses um delving into those disparities and statistics and all these type things and seeing kind of like what what's what's going on there you know um, what's going on under the surface and um you know i, I guess another thing is just you see that like one of the big problems that we have at the moment is the just the understanding and the types of relationships formed between health professionals and their patients uh, yeah. which is actually con contributing to a lot of people's sicknesses at the moment so you know if you um if you're going to put it like in cultural context if you're from a different culture and you go to a uh, a doctor who just doesn't quite I don't know, they might be a bit too assertive maybe in what they're doing or they just very blunt with you or mm. it's those experiences, you know, they're, they're quite important, especially with health, you know, like it's it's a super important thing. So I'm pretty sure they've got a system in place as well where it's the comp competency levels are checked or upgraded almost um, like every two or three years with, with um, doctors. Mm. Um, if anyone can correct me on that, then um, yeah. Mm. But I'm pretty sure it's something similar to that too and I think that's, again, important. But you can see like the nature of of the these types of topics they all go back to the education side of it and yeah, how, yeah, yeah. how if that was in place you know from the get-go we kind of almost wouldn't be debating these particulars yeah. now at the moment mm. you know, so. it's like trying to create like a welcoming comfortable atmosphere and a really uncomfortable atmosphere yeah like, yeah who likes going to the doctors like really mm, mm. i hate going mm. to the doctor not if they sound like that lady of the dairy <laughs> oh yeah true true <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> But you know, it's like yeah. that whole thing. It's like if you want, Oops. if you want like better health, you mm. want to create a welcoming atmosphere and this, this comfortability where people can actually go and say like, "Hey, look, like, yeah, I feel sick." Like, yeah, yeah, what's going on? You know, um, like even actually to to go back to the health professional side of it, the UMAT, mm. the UMAT mm. exam is a massive problem here. So when I first came here, um, I was told that. The UMAT exam itself, uh, I mean, was uh, well, being a health professional, I've been a health science student, I should say, myself in first year, I, I had to kind of learn a bit more about this. But um, what I was told, and this just goes to show uh, the, the lack of education that was given to me even that day, was that, yeah, Māori being the minority had, I guess, they had to have some sort of like assistance or guidance for everyone to those degrees, you know, because they weren't, I guess, more as academically primed as what, yeah. you know, other people were. So it was, you know, um, it was accepted. I'm not going to lie. I would just kind of went, oh, okay, yep, uh, yeah, makes sense, I guess, maybe. I don't know. Mm. I didn't know enough at the time to actually break it down, but I had a real good talk with um, a friend of mine who was going through that same um, kind of um, situation in terms of the UMAT, and she's a doctor, at the, or she's studying to be a doctor at the moment. So um, and I asked her one day, and I just said, what, like, what, what actually is it about, like, um, you know, like, is it actually just that we get in for, like, we need that kind of extra little shove in the right direction, or like, what is it, you know? She said, no. When you go into a UMAT, um, again, uh, I'm speaking from what I've heard here, I'm open to criticism, I guess. Actually, no criticism, no, no negative criticism. <laughs> constructive. But constructive criticism and nice. Just be careful with the way it's delivered. But no, um, no but just, yeah, just in general, um, what she was kind of telling me was that, yeah, um, it wasn't in fact that they necessarily had like a shoe in or whatever it was. It was the fact that um, it came down to the, the perspectives and worldviews again mm. um, within that. So apparently the UMAT, um, I wouldn't know because I haven't sat it, but again, from what I've heard is that it's more of the common knowledge based questions or the um, how, how would you interpret um or say a scenario if you were a doctor and, and X, Y, and Z, so that type thing. So um, what it actually came down to and what I got from the whole conversation is, yeah, it wasn't that it was put in place to like help Māori. It was more, well, depending on what way you look at it, it was more actually the fact that, um, you know, we, we as, as I guess Māori and Pacifica and Indigenous, we've just naturally maybe got 
those different perspectives and worldviews into greater in us throughout yeah. our, our, our um, genealogy, our whakapapa, you know. And because of that, and because of the, when you put that in context of contemporary issues and society, we just might have a different way of approaching situations, mm. that's all, you know. Mm. And so, um, apparently, you know, the way, the way with the UMAT works is that it's, it's not the... Um, a was right in this and B was right in that and C was right in this. It's the it's a consensus base kind of who they, they kind of go off um, this is what the mass is or the majority. Yeah, yeah. 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 So they they've they've um everyone's kind of more agreed on this, so the ones who haven't they kind of you know, that you're wrong in that question also. So so that, yeah. <laughs> we both yeah. have the Wait, same question, mate. <laughs> yeah, so so Shaking. like Yeah, so um again I'm not gonna trust any Yeah, I'm not ever doing the email. Yeah, yeah, well, again, like the, from from kind of like what I've gathered slightly is from it is that um, yeah, again, that it's the it's more the perspective based approach on how you'd answer questions is just different between certain people. So they take the majority kind of well, everyone would have, would have approached it this way, so that's more the correct answer to it. Um, and, and if you happen to just approach it differently, uh, yeah. So so again. Um, no, I don't I'm, like that. I'm gonna just, <laughs> yeah. just bite I'm just, my tongue. I'm just yeah. saying I don't like that. <laughs> yeah. So um, I would never make it in. <laughs> yeah, neither. Like. <laughs> yeah. Um, so actually, I want to just pull something up here. Um, yeah, that's really like. I don't. I don't, I don't want to say sheep handling. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. Like grinding my gears. I'm so. a peacock man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. let me fly. <laughs> I want to. I want to actually, um, for the for the sake of this, and actually being. I mean, just seeing your guys' reaction off this, I want to go and revisit this message. So just give me a sec. Um, yeah, because what what I feel like, like saying that it says like a consensus thing, mm. but like they're having say leeway for like this many amount of like Maori or Pacifica um, entrances. But is it is that not a good thing? Because it's acknowledging the different worldviews. The, acknowledge, that's what I would have, yeah. I would have thought, you know. Um, yeah. But I mean, that's like knowing that like it's such a competitive entry pathway to get into those degrees. It's like there has, I guess, I guess there has to be some sort of system mm. in place to depict who gets in and who doesn't, you know. Yeah. Like, um, there's kind of like everyone can't get in. I want to just um, uh, kind of just gloss over this and give you guys my feedback well, on this. I know he's going to get in trouble here. No, yeah. no, no, no. The, we're, 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 not, we're remaining anonymous here. Um, so, so for the EQ questions, um, you need to interpret the scenario. Um, the answer is based on the general population um, sitting the exam. Um, so it is also framed uh, from a Pākehā worldview and created by an Australian company. Um, so as Māori and uh, Pacific Islanders um, are target areas of growing, growing in the health professional base, um they I'm just trying to they recognize the UMAT as an unfair test to give to people from different worldview. Um so yeah, so it's unfair um for all minority groups sitting the tests, but the university isn't targeting other groups. Um this said they're moving away from UMAT this year. Okay, yep. Um and I'm not sure if this reasoning applies to the new test, however, um, they are still targeting Māori and Pacific Islanders and low decile populations and are likely to also not consider the new test for these groups. Um, this is spoken by someone, like I say, studying medicine at the moment, so um, that's that's what's happening at the moment for the UMAT system, yeah. So yeah, essentially, um, what? yeah. I don't, I don't see anything wrong. I mean, like the only thing I think is wrong with that whole system is that, um, like, say they they understand the difference in opinions and they're letting people in mm -hmm. that way. But then I also feel for the other side of that coin, which, like, say, if you're part of the general mass mm -hmm. and you, you know, that system doesn't like cater to you either. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I mean, like, I'm not taking anything away from the different world views, but like, mm -hmm. that's that's easy. That's good. Yeah. I mean. <clears throat> I, the only thing I'd say would be like, yeah, it's kind of a superficial um, yeah. entrance level into like way of entry into this course. Yeah. Yeah. So, so can you like? Yeah. Uh, I mean, the the fact that we're sitting it's here almost it's clutching sticky. at straws yeah. as to like what so so what actually you know like there's no this this again is just like almost a microcosm of just how unstructured the the I, I believe the education system is in general. 
So the fact that we've got a, like a DAX perspectives and minorities and target base groups and all these type things, there's all these little things that we're acknowledging we've got to work on. But, uh, you know, again, yeah. I'm, I, I'm sorry that um, I guess my, my approach to a lot of like reprimanding things is like very simplistic and purist in its way. I understand that. Um, I just really um, have grown a very thick skin as to like, just getting carried away and caught caught up in all the other dramas man it's um it really comes down to um like we as humans can change a hell of a lot if we just talk with each other and and work together you know what i mean uh we're very powerful with what we can do obviously look at what we've done so far in the last 50 60 years industrialization globalization all these things and it just goes to show, I mean, like that was some sort of culture that helped expand that across all countries and all these type things. Well, why don't we like understand the reality of like our world is quite effed up at the moment. Um, so, so like what's the next transition or progression that we can make? And I just genuinely think that the simplicity of something like this, if people could do more of this at home or do more of this at school or whatever it is that this is at least the starting point for that because I don't unfortunately have some sort of secret pill or button or whatever to push right now to, to carry everything up, you know? No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. True. So, um, yeah, um, I think we might just maybe wrap it up there a little bit because I yeah, try and keep them to about 30 or 40 minutes for the viewers. Okay. Has it been 30 minutes? Yeah, yeah. I was just yeah. going to go. So, um, nice. I'm going to share it. Yeah. Um, I, I, again guys like the the stuff that you've shared today even for me um and i know you guys as well outside of you know like in the uni settings and stuff it's uh, i've learned a lot even from our conversations today you know um so yeah i just want to thank you guys again um i think we might next week as well just carry this on for maybe another week or two just to get some more perspectives in there yeah. and um yeah and if there's anything you guys wanted to just add in further add on there before we, we cruise off <laughs> <clears throat> oh, Ra was like, "What do you got to What do you got to say at the end of the, the thing?" And I honestly have no idea yeah. what to say. Yeah. Um, no, no, pretty, pretty cheesy, pretty cliche, mm -hmm. but you know, like, live it up every day. You know, like, mm -hmm. you know, like, do the best you can every day, and everything else, like, will fall into place. Yeah, super cheesy, but that's actually how I live. But <laughs> yeah, it all comes. Oh. Get okay, lit. the same now. Yeah, get lit. No, don't get lit. No, don't get lit. Um, well, I well, I guess so. But just like be lit on life. Like yeah. give a hundred percent. Don't like just be open to different pathways. And, mm. um, yeah. Fine. Don't be so like stiff when you're walking around in uni people yeah <laughs> we don't all need to look at grumpy faces yeah. you know, you know, you know just like a like a hello yeah yeah like the old elbow hello <laughs> <laughs> don't um, do that just disclaimer don't do that yeah. um but no it's, yeah uh just it, liven up your day be spicy be saucy I don't be know. spicy like, yeah and, and a bit of spice. yeah for sure and to, and i i think i said i i think i concluded with something pretty similar to last week but um, and it's it's just very relative to what you guys are saying, but I mean, life is again, guys, what you make of it. Eh? You know, like you've got that choice to go out the door every day, to be litty, to do you know, to these <laughs> things, spice up life. You've no, but you do. You know, um, I can't believe that's on record. Yeah. I said that. Yeah. The power, the power that this thing has up here to just con you know conduct yourself throughout the day, and and what type of effects that has, not just on you, but like all of the other people around you. You know, right yeah. um, it's just so important, I think. And so I'm going to preach that again this week. Is yeah, just just remember. Uh, uh, it might sound dumb or simple to a lot of you people, but just even the words you say to the first people you see in the morning. You know, it's just a lot to do with how your day might go or mm. the energies that you bring about you in your own life. So. Yep, again, just go out there, guys, um, try and spread some positivity. And if you guys have had any um, qualms or any kind of extra added info you wanted to maybe chuck in, um, just let's just while I'm in the um, discussion section again on Facebook or Instagram, both forums. And um, yep, thank you again, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, Yo. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> awesome.